May your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Again, thank you, Christina and, and Aldona for playing. It's, it's nice to be back in here with everyone and I love holding evening prayer. So um, as I had talked about before, what I'm preaching on is, is the Ten Commandments. And so the Ten Commandments, um, if you read the prologue to this, which you'll hear this Sunday, the prologue is talking about how this is, the Ten Commandments were given so that we can live with each other within Christian community. Well, not Christian, but within community with each other. Again, Jewish community, now Christian community. And so I wanted to go through um, the, the fourth uh, on. And so I wanted to start with the fifth commandment tonight. You shall not murder. Bosses das, or what does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not hurt or harm our neighbor in his body, but help and support him in every physical need. Now, how we can understand this idea of not murdering and being a Christian community, hopefully we do take this very literally. That if, you know, hopefully we're not murdering each other, you know, in Christian community. I think that's a good start, you know. Let's take this very literally. Don't kill anyone. All right. And so we're good with that. But what Luther talks about with his explanation of this commandment is not only are we supposed to not harm our neighbor, but we're also supposed to help them and make sure that their physical needs are being met as well. And so not murdering has a lot more to it than simply not going out and killing someone, which most of us do on a daily basis, right? Hopefully, uh, unless there's a confession that needs to come, which I'm here, but it's also a felony. So, you know, we have to figure that out. But, you know, when it comes to murdering, what Jesus says is he takes it to a whole nother level, even more than what Luther says. He says, if you talk badly, if you think poor thoughts about somebody, then you have murdered them in your own heart. And so this idea of murdering is a lot more, I think, than just taking life, right? Living is a lot more than simply being, right? It's a lot more than than paying taxes and dying. And so my question about this murdering thing is not whether we're doing this in our congregation, because hopefully, again, physically, we're not, literally. But by Jesus' standards, perhaps we are. Perhaps by Jesus' standards of murdering people, of, of, of speaking poorly about them, or thinking poorly about them, maybe that's what we're supposed to look at as a Christian community during this last season. Again, when I talked about what these things that in this wilderness that we're going through with quarantine and everything, what is this wilderness and what is it that God is purging from us at this time so that when we get back, we can get grace upon grace. And so what's being purged, I think now, or at least what has come to light, is that as a Christian community, we need to learn that Christian, Christian community and Christianity does not mean that all of our problems are simply going to be solved. That simply by being Christian or by being here or by tuning in, that somehow we're not going to murder each other. Or that somehow we're not going to think poorly of somebody else. But all this does, as, as Paul, or as this talked about in the Ten Commandments, is that this is to show us where we are doing wrong. Paul talks about that it elucidates our sins. So it's going to show us, it's going to show us what needs to be and so in this, you know, it's not just taking of life because part of it is giving as well. And so as a community, are we doing that? Are we giving life to each other? Are we making sure that our physical needs are met? And even more, are we making sure that our relationships are being met? Because right now when we are in the middle of this, we're acting out, guys. I told, I, I just talked with our president. It seems like every single day, I am putting out fire. And what we need to get back to is by simply loving each other in this time. As I said before, but it needs to be said again, this time is not fun for anyone. I don't like wearing these masks. I don't like that nobody is here and it's just Charlie and everyone else. You know, I love that everyone's here, but I wish we had a full sanctuary. I wish we were, we were together and we were able to have community. But again, as we look at the physical needs of the whole, we understand that as much as these are annoying, this is what we need to do to not murder our neighbor. As annoying as it is that we can't be here and I'm preaching to a microphone 
that looks, well, a camera that looks like a microphone. I'm not even sure what it is. It's a cool camera, but it's weird. But this is what we do as a Christian community. Because what I said is when the going gets tough, the tough get going. And so as we go through this, what we need to do is remember, do not murder. But even more, vasus das, what is it? Well, it doesn't look like just not killing somebody. It looks like helping somebody to live. So that's my question in this time. What is being purged? But even more as Christians in this Christian life, are we living? Are we even able to take away this life that, that we are having? Because right now we're at a standstill. But what's beautiful is that God does not stop working. As we talked about earlier, hopefully you guys tune into the Bible study, but God works through everybody. And God especially works through those who, he does, who do not look like they should be. And that's each and every one of us. And so as we go through this quarantine stuff together, as we go to reopening, as we go to looking at what this is going to look like as we try to get back to some sort of normalcy, let us not forget that Christian community. Let us not forget that when you were baptized in that water, you were knit together with all these saints, with the saints that are here tonight, with the saints that are online, with the saints that are in this church, with people that are outside the walls, because again, the church is people. We are the body of Christ. And as we continue on this journey, this journey to, toward the cross, we remember that this relationship is even more than just us, but that we are so knit, so closely, so connected to Christ through our baptism, that Christ pulls us with him through death into resurrection, into new life, pulls us through hell to bring us to resurrection. So do not murder. I hope you guys are going to do good with that tonight, and I hope I'll do good with that as well in a very literal sense. But even more, how is God purging that from us now? How is God saying that you are not of this world? You are not a Republican, a Democrat. You are not this or that or the other. You are a beloved child of God. And that means something. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, we're going to continue on this Lent journey together. We're going to continue to be a Christian community together. And not only are we not going to murder each other, but we're going to try to help each other live. Live this spiritual life together. Amen. shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it.
gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Thank you. 